Your Excellency President Shimon Peres, the Mayor of Jerusalem, Chairman of the Jewish Agency, the Head of Keren Aesot, distinguished guests. I apologize because I really don't know what I go to say, but I promise to keep my monetary not to be politically correct. <laughs> and uh, first of all, I will start with uh, Arab Spring and what the perspectives of our region. I think that the, at least for us, it's clear today that the Arab Spring it's a protest not against Zionism, not against our dispute with the Palestinians, but it's a, pro a protest against poverty and misery. Israel has been contending for many years with some misrepresentations or misunderstandings. And maybe the biggest misunderstanding uh, was that the Israeli-Palestinian dispute, it's the heart of the Middle East conflict. Today it's clear, at least me, I don't see any ties, any connection between our dispute with the Palestinians and clashes in Bahrain, the uprising in Tunisia, in Libya, the clashes in uh, Syria or turmoil in Egypt. And of course, the second most popular point, at least today, the settlements and the settlers. Uh, I think it's also very clear that uh, we signed two peace agreements with Egypt and Jordan despite the settlements. And opposite, it's also true. We undertook, sorry, insane process called disengagement. We evacuated 21 flourishing settlements. We transferred more than 10,000 10, Jews and today we have more than uh, 12,000 missiles and shells on southern Israel, include today, include yesterday and day before yesterday. And uh, for, at least for me, it's clear that uh, the key to resolve all our problems, it's not weapons, it's not territory, but it's economy. We have a lot of discussions with our colleagues in the West, what's the future of the Arab world, if, it's, uh, if our expectations to see vibrant democracy among our neighbors, like in Israel, it's uh, realistic, it's not realistic. I think that the biggest problem of Arab world uh, to build the real democracy, open democracy, it's a middle class. The problem, the middle class in the Arab world uh, doesn't exist. And guarantee for the peaceful policy, for the stable democracy, for tolerance, it's uh, a middle class. When we, try to when we try to understand what it's a guarantee really in Europe, in Scandinavian countries, in Benelux, for their policy, for their prosperity, it's only the strong, wide, uh, successful middle class. Uh, we don't know in the, the phenomenon in the modern uh, Western world, poverty uh, among 90% of population and some uh, small numbers of oligarchs in the top. And it's the biggest challenge, how to develop this middle class in the Arab world. The same with the Palestinians. What's the right way to achieve real solutions with the Palestinians? I think, at least uh, my vision, that it's impossible to impose peace. And what we saw before, uh, or what we saw in the last years, it's an attempt to impose peace. I think it's possible to build peace. But it's a long way. I don't know a short way to build real peace and uh, confidence in our future. And uh, my vision, at least, the difference between my vision and the other approach is that, first of all, we must provide security and prosperity. And after, you can uh, speak 
and only after you can speak about the real uh, and stable peace. Uh, what we had up until today, it's first of all, you must uh, sign a peace agreement, and uh, as a result of peace agreement, you will see prosperity and security. I think that the right order, it's really opposite. First of all, let's develop the economy, the middle class, the security, and uh, after, it really will be very, very easy. Without special invoice, without quartet, we will achieve uh, the peace solution with the Palestinians. The second uh, problem, it's a weakness of the international community. We're facing a lot of challenges. And the fact that all powers in the world not able to stop this massacre in country like Syria, we uh, see every day on our screens uh, hundreds of people killed, uh, bloodshed, victims, and uh, we have a lot of meetings, friends of Syria, Security Council discussions, but in the end of the day, after 15 months, we still can see every day these clashes and uh, this uh, bloodshed. The same uh, I saw the Prime Minister mentioned North Korea. It's something unbelievable. Most isolated country in the world, very poor country with a crazy leadership. They continue to, with their blackmail, and the uh, international community still uh, not able to stop their uh, nuclear program and uh, to stop their threats. The same situation in a very, very complicated situation in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Somalia, and uh, in the midst of all this uh, political earthquake, small, vibrant democracy, Israel. Around us, Somalia, Horn of Africa, Somalia, Sudan, Yemen, Syria, Libya, Egypt, and uh, we are facing everyday threats, everyday attempts, uh, new, provoca uh, new provocations, terror. Uh, every week, another call uh, from uh, Iranian leaders to wipe the state of Israel. And despite all of this region, despite of all this environment, we keep situation with the Palestinians under control. There are uh, frictions, there are tensions, but uh, it's impossible even to compare to the other region. What, uh, at least uh, my hope, and uh, I hope that the next year in these uh, meetings, in this conference, we will have another guest from Egypt, from Syria, from Jordan, and we will discuss not only the issues of territory or weapons, but the issues like economy, like education, science. And uh, I think in the moment that we will start to discuss with our neighbors how to develop our economies, the co uh, cooperation, the education, we will see in other future. Thank you. Your Excellency President Shimon Peres, thank you for this impressive uh, conference, for these very important meetings. And uh, as I mentioned, next year in Jerusalem, with many, many guests from our neighbors. Thank you again. Thank you.